Hey everyone, Michelle Mays here. I'm the founder of the Center for Relational Recovery and Partner Hope. And I am here to talk to you guys today about the topic of staying or leaving your relationship. So I think around this issue, this issue is like fraught because in our culture, there's all kinds of like uh, unhealthy, very black and white thinking around this issue that I think then comes in for betrayed partners and affects how we think about it and how we're the pressure that is felt around this issue. So I wanna talk about this today and talk about how to kind of move out of this black and white thinking and move to thinking about this topic in a more nuanced and complicated way. So one of the things that I see happen in this, like thinking about it in a black and white manner is that there's sort of this idea that leaving your relationship, if you've been cheated on, that leaving your relationship is somehow the healthier thing to do or the stronger thing to do. And that staying in your relationship is automatically the weaker thing to do and also perhaps the more unhealthy thing to do. So there's this weird sort of undercurrent of assigning health to leaving and unhealth to staying, strength to leaving and weakness to staying that undergirds the decision-making that partners are in around whether or not they can stay in their relationship after betrayal. And any time that we are dealing with um, big issues in our culture, what tends to happen just, I don't know why, I don't know why this happens, it just does happen, is that what happens is very complicated and nuanced issues become very oversimplified. And then they become oversimplified into these binary positions of very black and white thinking, very binary thinking, actually around very complicated issues. And whether to stay or leave your relationship is a very complicated issue. It's a very nuanced issue. So what I see in the culture is this sort of myth, this idea that if you are cheated on, you should leave. Uh, you know, once a cheater, always a cheater. Nobody can change their behavior. The relationship cannot be saved. And so if you've been cheated on, if you have a shred of dignity and self-respect in you, you need to sort of wrap yourself in your cloak of self-righteousness and stalk out of the relationship. That is the cultural message that we are being given. The reality is that that, that idea flies in the face of all the research we have and all that we know about, about how people attach in their relationships, how our attachment systems function, and what it means to try to break an attachment with our long-term romantic partner, and how difficult and challenging and the cost of doing that, what it actually costs us in terms of our mental and emotional health and the impact to our family, to our children, to the larger culture, a larger society, all of that. We all do better when we can stay in our relationships and our relationships can be healthy. Now, not all relationships can be healthy and not all relationships are ones that you can stay in. But leaving, making a decision to leave a relationship is a very complicated thing to do. It's a very uh, nuanced, layered decision. So what happens for betrayed partners is we've got this cultural message, we've got this binary thinking, and they come to this decision and they have this sense of, if I'm staying, I'm weak. If I'm staying, I'm sick. I must, so there must be something wrong with me that I am staying in this relationship. And again, that is the wrong framework completely. You have to kind of throw out this idea 100%, throw out this binary way of thinking about it completely in order to get to something that actually makes sense and matches what we know about how we function in our relationships as human beings. So what is really true about staying and leaving is that either one of them, both decisions, staying or leaving, can be made out of a place of sickness and out of a place of weakness. You could choose to leave your relationship out of sickness out of weakness. It could be a bad decision and how you do it could be done 
poorly, could be done in a very unhealthy way. You can choose to stay in your relationship and it be an unhealthy decision and it be made out of sickness, it be made out of weakness, it be made out of a, a not being able to do the right thing for you and your family. So it isn't about which decision you're making, it's about how you are making the decision and how you are carrying it out. That is what impacts whether the decision is a good decision, a healthy decision, made from a position of empowerment rather than powerlessness. It's the how. It isn't what the decision is. So you can stay from health, you can stay from illness. You can leave from health, you can leave from illness. It's all about how you do it. That is what matters and that is what is significant. So when we're thinking about staying or leaving the relationship, that is how we want to think about it. We don't want to agree with this idea, this extreme idea that leaving is the better choice in some way. And if you've stayed, you've somehow compromised something. That is not at all the truth. That is just a, that is a myth out there in the culture. All right. So I also want us to think about for a minute, what else is going on here with the staying and the leaving? So another thing that I think is important for betrayed partners to look at and to notice is the role that making this decision plays in what's going on with you within your relationship. Because there is a pattern that I see unfold for betrayed partners over and over and over again. There's a pattern that they get into around this issue. Not all of them, but many, many, many. And I think it's really important to understand this pattern and what's really going on with it. So the pattern is that the betrayed partner will think about the decision to stay or to leave, to stay or to leave, to stay or to leave. They'll perseverate on that decision and focus on it and sort of obsess on it in their mind and think about it a lot, spend a lot of time on it, over months, over years even. And they will get into this binary thinking about something must be wrong with me that I'm staying. They'll get into all of that kind of stuff. So when partners are in this pattern where they're spending a lot of time, they're returning in their mind over and over again to, should I stay? Should I leave? I think I should leave. Da, 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 da. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Often what is actually going on is this is a way of the mind distracting you and keeping you busy and keeping you occupied because you feel like you're doing something when you're in this thing in your head. So it's keeping you distracted and it's keeping you busy while, while at the exact same time, what you're not doing is making the decisions that would actually tell you whether you need to leave or stay. So you're in your head about it rather than in your behaviors. So your head is going round and round and round on this in your mind. And while you're doing that, what you're not doing is setting a boundary or using your voice effectively, operating from your personal power center, doing all of that. You're not doing those behaviors because if you do them, you're going to find out whether you can stay or leave. You're going to get the answer. When you say, look, if you do this behavior again, if you contact your affair partner again, then I'm going to need to ask you to move out because I simply cannot live in a relationship where you continue to be unfaithful to me, where you continue to lie to me and to cheat on me. That's not tolerable for me. So that's my boundary that if you do that, I'm going to need to separate. If you say something like that, then the cheating partner now has to decide, am I honoring this boundary or am I not? Am I being faithful or am I not? Like, what am I doing here? When you do that, when you set that kind of boundary, now you're going to find out what's actually true in the relationship. Now you're going to find out whether or not the cheating partner is willing to walk away from the affair, walk away from the addictive behavior, whatever it may be, and focus on healing and repairing and recovery, or if they're not willing to do that. So often what's happening for betrayed partners is they're focused on, should I stay? Should I leave? Should I stay? Should I leave? And they're not taking these other steps 
that would actually help them answer that question. And the reason they're not taking this step is because they are afraid to find out. They're afraid of losing the relationship. They're afraid that the answer is going to be the painful answer of the cheating partner is not willing to do what needs to be done. That is a scary, scary answer to get. It's a really hard answer to get. It's hard to hear a no. It's hard to get a no on this, right? But without doing this, you will never actually move through betrayal to either repair or leaving the relationship and crafting a new life for yourself. So what happens is betrayed partners go into their mind and they go round and round and round in their mind on this issue instead of taking these actions because of the fear. So this is a place of enormous stuckness for a lot of betrayed partners. They feel really stuck. They're thinking, thinking, thinking all the time, but they're not doing the behaviors that would actually help them come to some resolve on what is going on in their relationship. The other thing that's really important to think about on this issue is that for you as a betrayed partner, you have to be able to leave your relationship in order to truly stay in your relationship. All right, so here's what I mean by that. If you do not have the emotional strength, the resilience, whatever it is you need, the ego strength, to leave your relationship if you need to, then you're staying because you're stuck. You're staying out of fear of loss, fear of losing the relationship. If you're staying because you're stuck, then you're not, your staying is not a true choice. You're staying out of stuckness rather than I choose you. I choose our relationship. I choose our family. I choose to repair what has happened with you. So instead of staying from choice, which is an empowered way to stay and gives you a sense of, I am making a choice for me and I'm making the right choice for me, the best choice for me. Instead, you're staying because of fear of loss. You're staying because you're stuck. So that is no way to stay. You want to stay out of choice. You want to know that if you needed to leave, you could, and that you're staying because you're choosing to be there. You want to be there. You want to work on this. You love this person. You want to repair the relationship. So all of this, everything we're talking about here is again around that issue of the fear of loss, the fear of what will happen if you stand your ground, if you set a boundary, what will happen if you find out the truth about what the cheating partner is willing to do or not willing to do, what will happen if you really face your own demons around, can I leave, can I stay? So staying stuck in your head about this issue is a way of sort of avoiding all these very um, big, scary, difficult questions and difficult uh, new behaviors and new ways of being in your relationship that you need to learn as a betrayed partner. So my hope is that just talking about this today gives you a better sense of what might be happening for you around this issue. And I really hope one, that it gives you a new way of thinking about staying or leaving and that you throw away, throw out this idea that leaving is somehow more noble or more healthy than staying and instead replace it with the understanding that it's how you do it. Both can be healthy and good behaviors and good choices and both can be unhealthy, not good choices for you. So it's all about your situation and what is truly best for you and how you do it. And then that you will really look at how you can get stuck in this perseverating in your mind about staying or leaving instead of taking the actions that will move you toward resolving that question. So if you feel stuck about this, if you feel like this is describing you and you're having trouble figuring out how to put feet on the ground in terms of doing these things that need to be done to move you out of the unhealthy pattern in the relationship into freedom, into health, into a new relational pattern with yourself or with your partner, then uh, schedule a call with us. Give us a call. We will spend about 45 minutes on the phone with you and we will talk about whether working with us is a good fit for you or not. And either way, you're going to get help and clarity on that call about what is going on for you right now and where you're stuck. So we're going to put the link underneath and you can click that link and schedule a call with us. And I and my team will look forward to talking to you. 
All right, so I will see you all next Thursday.